So we can just introduce linear systems without at least giving an application or two. In this lecture, we're going to dedicate one application to trusses. Now, a truss is a structure normally containing triangular units, as you can see in this figure. See a triangle here, 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 four in this square, and so on. The triangular units are constructed of straight members with ends connected at joints referred to as pins. So each end of the edge of a triangle is referred to as pins, or you can see pins as intersection of two or more edges. Now trusses are the primary structural component of many bridges, as you can see in the animation over here. You can imagine this as a bridge, which is modeled as a truss. Now, why are trusses really important? Because they can model external forces. So those forces are considered to act only at the pins and result in internal forces in the members, which are either tensile or compressive. You should know that civil engineers design trusses and must determine the forces at the pins of a truss so it will remain static under a load. As you can see here, we have a truss with a certain load that we did not depict. And depending on the, you know, on the load we applied on the truss, we can see that the truss might be subject to many different movements. For example, you might see a truss moving this way or even this way. It all depends on how you exert the force on the truss. Okay? All those are possible bending modes of a truss. So imagine I've got this truss in front of me with the following red pins labeled from 1 to 5, which is under a load of 1,500. So there's a load right here, the value of 1,500 units. It is allowed to move slightly horizontally at pin 1 and under a load. Since we've got seven edges, we're going to assign seven member forces labeled D, F, E, G, H, I, and J. Now, a positive value for a member force means that it is a tensile force. So the member force is directed away from the pins at its ends. Now, furthermore, we're going to have three reaction forces that are labeled A, which acts at pin 1, B and C acting at pin 5, as such. Now, keep in mind that when talking about trusses, reaction forces are an effect or are due to a roller and a pinned support. So let's consider without loss of generality, but a pinned support over here, so it's labeled as such, and a roller support right over here. Okay? A positive value for a reaction force, so if A is let's say positive, this would mean that it acts in the direction shown. So it will be acting upwards. If the value of the force A was negative, it would be downwards. Likewise, if the value of reaction force B were to be positive, then B would be towards the left, else it would be to the right, okay? Now the values of all these unknown internal and reaction forces can be found by solving a system of equations. The truss is an equilibrium, so each pin of the truss contributes to two equations to the system. One equation expresses the fact that the x component of the forces on that pin adds to zero. And the other equation will express the fact that the y component does also. So if I grab pin 1 for the moment, and we're going to, you know, a is not only a label, it's going to be the value of the force. So if I were at pin 1, we're going to have two equations. We're going to have one while projecting onto the x-axis. Let's say the angle over here is, I don't know, say something like 48 point four degrees. So if I project over here, I'm going to get that D 
cosine 48.4. Since this guy is upward, we're going to insert a minus. And there's one more force here, which is the F. So minus F is equal to zero, right? Another one due to the Y is going to be the sine 48.4. The F when projected along the Y axis is going to be zero. So we're left with this. This is also zero. This guy is a effect of projecting along x and this guy is projecting along y okay now if you go ahead and do the same thing for all the pins we're going to end up with 2 by 5 that is 10 equations right and all of them turn out to be linear in the member and reaction forces okay let's do the same thing for pin 2 so if i have an angle here of let's say 60.9 and an angle here of i don't know say 45 then now we can fill in all the other angles so let's go ahead and apply projections onto pin 2 and pin 2 if I project along the x-axis, I'm going to get a component from D, so minus D times cosine 48.4, a component from E, because it's connected to it, with a value of 60.9, so plus E cosine 60.9, and a G with cosine 0, that is only G. They add up to 0. Now project along Y, you're going to get minus D sine 48.4, minus e sine 60.9 and a plus g sine 0 which is 0 so only that equal to 0. Same thing on pin 3 we're going to get project along x first of all you're going to have components coming from f e h and j right so we're going to get an e minus cosine 60.9 so minus e cosine 60.9 and a minus f it's f cosine 180 so minus f and an h cosine 45 and a j cosine zero, so plus j. That is equal to zero. Well, pay attention, there is a force on pin three. But since this force is perpendicular to the x-axis, then it does not contribute to anything because cosine 90 is zero. Now let's do the projection along y. So you get a minus e sine 60.9. The f does not contribute because sine 180 is zero. Then a minus h sine 45 and also the j does not contribute because sine 0 is 0 this is all equal to a thousand and five hundred because a thousand and five hundred fully projects let's go ahead to pin 4 projecting along the x-axis we have only two components i and h the g cancels out so we get minus i minus sine 45 h this is equal to 0 Sorry, this guy over here is G, because G is the one along the x-axis, so minus G. Now, since I is along the y-axis, we get a minus I minus sine 45 times H is zero. Last but not least, let's check out five. And at pin one, we forgot the A along the y-axis, so here we should insert a minus A, okay? Now, pin five, projecting along the x-axis, we're going to get minus B minus j is zero now along the y-axis you're going to get minus c plus i is zero simple as that now let's combine all the equations in matrix form and after computing the cosines and sines and everything you're going to get a matrix of coefficients multiplied by the vector of unknowns a till j equals to the right hand side now all of the right hand side is zero except for one equation that gave us a thousand and five hundred and so on so filling the coefficients up, we get the following matrix, where the first two are due to pin 1, pin 2, the second two are due to pin 2, the third two are due to pin 3, pin 4, and pin 5, right? Now to solve this, you can use the method that we talked about, namely Gaussian elimination. We discussed Gaussian elimination in previous lectures. I'm not going to do this here because it's really exhaustive. I have to pay attention, although first element is zero, you have to exchange the second and first rows, okay? And then proceed. I'll just give you the answer over here. I've done it on a piece of paper. I'll just give you what I reached. So you get the following solution, okay? So in this lecture, we discussed a particular application of linear systems to trusses, where a truss presents a problem in statics, which is a field of study dedicated for civil engineering. Keep in mind that forces must balance so that 
the truss remains intact under a given load or loads. At the pins, the force in must equal to the force out. If we have k pins, then we get 2k equations in 2k unknowns, as we saw here. So we have 5 pins, we obtained 10 equations in 10 unknowns. And the solution of this system will thus tell you what are the member forces and reaction forces on each pin. So that's about it. If you found this lecture beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible.